At The Hague are gathered 800 delegates representing 23 European nations. Men and women of all walks of life, they, like France's wartime premier Edward de Ladier, have come to seek the first United States of Europe. The Dutch royal couple, welcoming Mrs. Churchill and Anthony Eden, greet the delegates who include Leslie Hoare Belisha. Not sponsored by any one government, yet willed by every nation, the Hague meeting seems to the people of Europe another groping but positive step for peace. Winston Churchill, in his role as world statesman, presides over the inaugural session. Party politics are thrust into the background as the man who gave Europe back its freedom receives the acclaim of its representatives. In the countries around them, the Hague delegates see other hopeful signs for a united Europe. The Five Power Alliance signed at Brussels last month. Above all, the economic cooperation created by the Marshall Plan nations. As France's ex-socialist Premier Ramadier addresses the conference, it becomes clear that this movement is one that transcends all parties and all frontiers. In this medieval hall of knights, Belgium's ex-premier Van Zeeland addresses the delegates. As he speaks, the plan for the continent's federation becomes brighter. For which tant tant d'hommes, tant d'Europeans and tant d'autres, in pleine conscience, mais aussi en toute confiance, ont fait le sacrifice de leur vie. Calling a Europe, desperately seeking a sign of hope amid a mass of war talk, Winston Churchill says, It is not a movement of parties, but a movement of people. It must be all for all. Europe can only be united by the heartfelt wish and vehement expression of the great majority of all the peoples in all the parties, in all the freedom-loving countries, no matter where they dwell or how they vote. We cannot aim at anything less than the union of Europe as a whole, and we look forward with confidence to the day when that union will be achieved. 